Okay. Uh, welcome everyone to our webinar for transfer applicants. Uh, we're so excited to have that you have joined us today to learn a little bit more about transferring into our Griffin community. We acknowledge that the University of Guelph campuses resides on the lands of the dish with once been wampum. We recognize that the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Lenipiwak, and Huron-Wendat peoples have inhabited these lands for centuries, and we respect their enduring relationships with these lands. We are committed to working towards decolonization and reconciliation with Indigenous peoples and enhancing the engagements of and First Nation and supports for First Nations, Inuit, and Métis students. Okay. So my name is Taylor and I graduated in 2020 with a Bachelor of Arts and Sciences with minors in Neuroscience and Family and Child Studies. Uh, during my time at Guelph, I lived and worked in residence and housing for a student club called Inner Hall Council, where I represent resident students. And I also work for hospitality as the ombudsperson. I was the student link between our amazing campus food and I also worked on our on-campus bookstore. I absolutely love being so close to our Arboretum, which is 400 acres of nature and trails and meadows. And one of my favorite locations on our campus was the fourth floor in the library, which is group study, where my friends and I enjoyed studying with our Starbucks and beautiful views of our campus below. A little fun fact about me is that my brother is also a Griffin, and he is currently in his last year of his Bachelor of Arts studying music and business. In today's webinar, um, it's specifically for transfer students, so who have applied for admission to an entry point in 2024. Uh, our plan is to highlight the next steps and things that you need to keep in mind after you've submitted the application. While it might seem like a lot of information at once, please be aware that everything that I have discussed uh, can be found on our website. You can use the Q&A like, to ask questions throughout the presentation and um, if you have any like detailed questions or unique circumstances, we can discuss them at the end too, if you wanted. Uh, and then also please note that this webinar is going to be recorded and posted on our website so that you can access it later or share with friends who are not like able to attend today. Okay. So web advisor. So after you apply, you'll receive an email from us acknowledging that your application has been received. Another email will be sent soon after that. And it contains what we call our like your central login information. This is a username and password combination that you'll use to access your University of Guelph email account and web advisor account. We can't stress enough that you should write down your central login username and password and save it in a place that can be easily referenced, maybe like a notes app in your phone or something. It's important to check both your email and web advisor regularly to avoid delays in processing your application. Please note that after these initial emails, we will not use your personal email address for further communication. WebFizer is an online tool that enables you to monitor the status of your application and view required documents. It's also how you'll be notified of required documents, as well as whether they have been reviewed or are still outstanding. If you need any help um, logging into your WebAdvisor or U of G email accounts, you can contact our Computing and Communication Services at 519-824-4120, extension 588888, or our IT help at uofwealth.ca. Okay, so our staff updates WebAdvisor manually, so please know that once your documents have been received, you will need some time to process them and update the documents section of our WebAdvisor account. We're grateful for your patience and encourage you to check back regularly. To check your application status, go to WebAdvisor homepage and log in using your central login username and password. You'll find admission status in the right-hand corner and the side menu under admission information. Okay, because sometimes it's easier. Oh, that's okay. So, Sometimes it's easier to watch a video. That's okay. We'll have that published later too. Um, you can watch this video. We have it posted in our YouTube information um, and we'll also have it in our channel link too. But basically you just go in and log in through our web advisor. So now we'll explain the application statuses that you might see on web advisor. So if you see application received, that means that we have your application, but we haven't received documents or transcripts that are necessary to consider it. Essentially, your application isn't complete yet if you see the status. You should check the document section to see what you need to submit. If you see forwarded for decision, that means we've received your documents and your application is complete. Your application has been sent forward to be reviewed for an admission decision. 
So normally an admission decision comes after you see forwarded for decision, unless we need final grades or additional documents from you. That's where the other two sizes are on this side. So decision pending final grades means that you won't get a decision until we get your final transcript from the current semester. And further information required means that the admission committee needs more information before they can reach a decision. If you see this in your application size, you should check the document section to see what additional information is required. This slide shows admission decision statuses. So if you see one of these statuses, it means that a letter is on your way to you that explains the decisions and next step information. Note that we don't have the digital offer or refusal letter letters available on WebAdvisor. Please wait to receive your letter by other means before you contact us to inquire about conditions of your offer or reasons for your application being refused. Admitted conditionally means that you've been admitted, but there are conditions you need to meet. We will include the final deadline for your for you to meet your conditions in your offer letter. Admitted is self-explanatory, you've been admitted. In this case, there aren't any conditions or any follow-up that you need to do with admission services. Refused external and refused requirements mean that you are admissible to the program because you haven't met the minimum requirements. And refused no space means that you have met the minimum requirements, but we can't grant admissions because the program that you've applied to doesn't have any available space. Just a friendly reminder that all of this information about application statuses is also available at our U of Wealth transfer um, website. Okay, documents. So before we can consider your application complete, you need to submit documents and transcripts from any and all institutions you've attended, including high school. Exceptions to this if you are applying for non-degree studies or the Doctor of Veterinary Medicine program. We are accepting unofficial documents to be considered for a conditional offer of admission. This means you can't send us it means you can send us transcripts in your possession that have been opened, and if they include the necessary information, you could get an offer. If you do get an offer based on unofficial transcripts, you'll need to arrange the submission of official copies by a certain date, which is outlined in your offer letter. If you are unable to attain official copies of your transcripts from an international school that you've attended in the past, please contact WES, WES, or ICAS, I -C -A -S, to get a credential evaluation report. These are okay in place of official transcripts. In terms of how to submit documents, a reminder that we do not have a document upload option on WebAdvisor. So you can upload unofficial documents on OUAC when you apply or submit them to applicant at uoguelph.ca, which is shown up on the screen there, or intdocs at uoguelph.ca if you're an international student. Our team will ensure that they're included in your application folder for review. Okay. Just a reminder that if you've applied to the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture or Diploma in Turf Grass Management, you must submit your background information form to be considered. The deadline for the Associate Diploma in Turf Grass Management is February 16th, and for Landscape Architecture is May 1st. These forms are reviewed by the admission committees. They want to know why you're interested in the program and why you're passionate about a career in these fields. Background information forms are available on our admissions website. Okay. Transfer applicants are welcome to submit a personal support letter to accompany their application. Note that the support letter is optional unless it's specifically requested in the document section of your WebAdvisor account. There are no specific guidelines for content or formatting other than that you have to submit the letter to applicant at uofwealth.ca as a Word or PDF document attachment after you have applied. Most students keep the letter to one to two pages and use it to explain or elaborate on extenuating circumstances that may have affected their grades in the past, their reasons for applying to the University of Guelph, and their future academic or career goals. Document deadlines. So on screen now are the document submission deadlines for entry points in 2024. Note that documents and transcripts for your application must be received in admission services by these dates. You should submit documents well before these deadlines to ensure that we get them on time. Transfer credits. So again, to evaluate and assess your transcript for transfer credits, the admission counselor will look at your transcript and compare it to the university's existing credit equivalency table. If a course has not been evaluated and added to the equivalency table, the admission counselor looks at course outlines and sometimes consults faculty to determine transfer credit. For university transfer applicants or for applicants enrolled in a degree program at a college, we usually grant transfer credit for all previously passed courses. You'll still need to complete both the program's residency and degree requirements to graduate. 
where a student has completed a course in an academic discipline or an area we do not offer, transfer credit is still considered and transfer credits are assigned more generically. So for example, a second year social work course from another institution would usually be a second year social sciences transfer credit at Guelph because we don't have social work. If you already hold a degree, you can get a maximum of 10 credits for your previous degree. This is equivalent to two years or one half of a four year honors degree program. Transfer students for college who have completed a two year diploma can expect to receive up to five credits. Graduates of a three year college diploma programs can expect to receive up to 10 credits. These are equivalent to one and two years of full time study respectively. Note, if you're applying for admission by a pre-existing pathway agreement from your college to one of our degree programs, the transfer credit you'll get is predetermined. You can also email Hillary, our pathways advisor at pathways at uofguelph.ca if you have any questions about the transfer credit for a specific pathway. So timeline, the question that we get asked the most is when will I get a decision? So your application is not reviewed until it is completed and your application status changes to forwarded for decision on WebAdvisor. From that point on, we try to review your application file and post admission decision as soon as we can. Sometimes we experience a little bit of a bottleneck effect when there's a high volume of applications, documents and transcripts coming to our office. When this happens, our applications may take a little bit longer than usual to process and to be considered. We appreciate your patience during these times. Some important notes. So if you apply to co-op, then you will be considered for the regular option. And if you apply to criminal justice and public policy or biomed, you will be considered for justice and legal studies and our biological science. Okay, a little bit about student life. So the University of Guelph is so much more than just your academic experience and your program and your experiences outside the classroom are just as important. Once you arrive, our coordinator of student transfer programs, Jen McCluskey, is ready to meet you and guide you through the transition of becoming a uh, Griffin. So this is just a little bit more about her and you can see that her email is up there, mccluske at uofguelph.ca. She's a really great support for transfer students coming from college, university, or any other um, institutions, and she is the one that does any sort of programming events, and of course, the one on one advising when you get here. And she has a lot of great resources for when you become a Griffin. Okay, now residents. Well, I mentioned that the University of Guelph is commutable for many. If you do want to live on campus, we have some great options for you. So, transfer students are welcome to apply for on campus housing. There are 13 residences to choose from on the north, east, and south sides of campus. All of our residence buildings are within a five to seven walk to the center of our campus. I had a single room in first year in South Residence where my mom and I prepped all summer long picking out the best laundry bag and the cutest rug and the coziest twiggly lights. And all these touches really made uh, my room feel like a home away from home. I lived in an academic cluster for my program where everyone who was in my tower was in the same program. I absolutely loved this as I was able to go to classes, study together, and I had an upper year uh, student in my program there to support us. Many transfer students like the townhouse and apartment style residences because they have kitchens and allow for more independent living. I lived in a townhouse in my last two years at Guelph. My room overlooked the University of Barbary the University of Guelph Arboretum, which is 400 acres of nature's and trails. If I ever needed a study break, luscious greens and chirping birds were right outside my door waiting to greet me. Living in a house with my friends, having a kitchen, living room and dining room with only a seven minute commute to class down a beautiful brick pathway was an absolute dream. So I highly recommend uh, checking out our housing at Guelph. Food living in residence that had a dining hall in it. My friends and I had a tradition of getting a late night snack. So whether that was a strawberry banana smoothie or a gourmet crepe um, or a slice of hot pepperoni pizza, calling it our second dinner, the food was just that good. So you can use your meal plan both on and off campus at over 40 locations combined. And you can pick from five different meal plans um, offered to best suit your dining hall needs. And it works just like a debit card. As the hospitality representative for my last two years, I was interviewed by McLean's Magazine, who ranks as number one for best campus food for over 10 years in a row in Canada. And I was able to boast about how accommodating our food is. So we have halal, vegan, kosher, and gluten-free options. And being their student link, I ensure that their voices were always heard through working with managers and making student life suggestions come to life. Uh, but what really blew me away was the commitment to sustainability and local food. So every Wednesday, our chefs actually go to a local produce auction and they bid from farmers for the freshest fruit and most vibrant veggies to make international flavors with local ingredients. The infamous butter chicken is actually a family recipe and it's from one of our esteemed international chefs. 
And on Wednesdays, I would get it with a slice of cake and I would get them in like reusable containers to go and I could drop them off at any like hospitality location after class. A little bit about athletics. In our bright and modern athletics center, my friend and I attended Zuma with Steph or Step in Core with Jeff. I accessed the gym with my energy membership, which is only $55 a semester. Athletics doesn't end with our fitness center, though. We also have a stunning 40-foot rock climbing wall, two rice rinks in our on-campus arenas, two huge swimming pools, and indoor and outdoor fields. We also offer a variety of varsity sports. So if you're thinking about playing on a team, I would encourage you to go visit griffins.ca. That's up on the screen now to get in contact with a coach. We also offer an intramural program that has over 9,000 students participate in it every year. There are multiple levels of difficulty to fit your experience needs. I never considered myself athletic in high school, and I did not participate in intramurals until my last year, but I genuinely wish I had done it sooner. I played on the Just for Fun and the multi-sport team where we played a different sport every week. Um, we played traditional sports like badminton and hockey and more unique ones like spike ball and dodgeball. Playing a new sport every week was tons of fun, and even though I didn't get very good at flight football or basketball, no surprise really, I love that every new sport we got closer became stronger and grew as a team. With over 200 clubs and organizations on our campus, it's really easy to get involved and feel supported and find friends with similar interests. I even tried out for Quidditch, Broomstick, and all. So find your people at Griffins Reed or join a student government like the Future Vets Club or represent your residence hall like I did. There is genuinely a club for everyone. So I would just like to encourage you to connect with us. So we have our campus tours, we have a virtual and on campus. If you scan the QR code that's up there right now, um, it will take you to any of that information and you can always chat with Unibuddy. Um, so chat, the Unibuddy is like a text-based messaging app platform where you can even message me on there um, and we can answer admissions questions, but it's also great to connect with current students to see how their experience is currently at the U of G. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> That's okay. Um, this next slide is like your U of G transfer team. So that's me up there. So that's my email transfer info at U of Guelph. So if you have any questions after today, you can always just email me there. And then Jen McCluskey's email is up there. So um, when you get your offer letter, you can connect with her and she'll have all the different programming and information that you kind of need to know about transferring at U of Guelph. But I will stick around to answer questions in the chat or you can ask them out loud. But anyways, otherwise, thank you so much for coming.